This is my new Dell XPS 8900. One thing that really brings me great joy about PC building is repurposing older hardware, especially the ones that have a lot of life left in them, like this Dell XPS 8900. Last time, I showed you guys how super easy it was to upgrade this PC. In my opinion, it performs very well. But this time, we will do something different. I will demonstrate how simple it is to turn this 8900 into this beautiful RGB gaming PC without breaking the bank. Let's get to it. Now, here's a couple of things that is required to make this case swap a success. A Phillips screwdriver and a beautiful RGB case. It is optional to have a 4-pin CPU extension cable. Also, it depends on the case that you use. Now, the very first thing to do is to take out all the components. Let's start by unplugging all the cables to make this process nice and easy. Next, I recommend removing the power supply because the wires will get in the way as well. To take the power supply out, push down on these two levers and slide the power supply forward, then we should easily come out. Now here's the reason why you may need a full pin CPU extension cable. <laughs> Look at this tiny short cable. It's just way too short. So if you have one of those big case, you definitely will need a CPU extension cable. Plus, they're pretty cheap. Those I bought those like a very long time ago, about 13 bucks. They usually be from, I would say $13 to $20. So it depends on what kind of color that you like. But me, I really love this lime green. Looks super amazing with any cases. Also, I recommend unplugging the Wi-Fi cables because they will get in the way as well. Plus, you don't want them to break. You just unplug them now, or you could just unscrew the Wi-Fi card if you want to make it easier, but I recommend just unplugging the cables for now. And then the next thing to do is just take out the motherboard, just unscrew these eight screws, and then you should be okay. And remember not to forget to take out the IO shield because you will bottleneck your static. <laughs> now, in order for you to get the Wi-Fi antennas out, we have to remove the front panel. So all you have to do is move up these two black plastic levers just move them up slightly and then you can just pull the front panel out and then all you have to do now is go on top and then unscrew the screws the two screws that's holding the wi-fi antennas All right guys, so one very important step about this case swap is that, which is the most important step as well, is the front panel connector, because we have to do a small modification. So in order to get the front panel connector out, we have to remove this black plastic. So to remove it out, all we have to do is squeeze in those two sides, and then where you see the marks is on the case, and then it should come out nice and easy. So as you guys can see, I already cut mine. This is just to show you guys how easy it is. All you need is a box cutter or a very small knife like this one. <laughs> but we're using the box cutter instead. So on the power connector, there's two sensor black wires that separated from the other six. So all we need is the two black ones to bypass all the security boot errors. As you can see, the middle is empty and that's where we will need to cut. As long as there's no metal in there, that's where we need to cut. And then also don't worry about it because as long as you just take it nice and slow with the box cutter or maybe like a small you know knife all you got to do is up and down so nice and slowly that's how i did it then you turn around on the other side too nice and slowly it should come off it should break apart and after that we we'll just put the sensor somewhere safe because we will need it later on in the video
So now guys, one thing to consider before doing the case swap is finding a case that simplified the case swap. Now, the case that I chose is the Okinos Mirage 4, a very small compact micro ATX from factor that I provided with two tempered glass and three beautiful RGB fans. And one cool thing about this case is that it can fit on any size desk. <laughs> this thing should have been called the Micro Mini. That's how tiny this case look. Then I'm truly surprised that it can fit actually a 240mm AI on top of it. And then one of the best features is that, especially when buying a budget case, is having an ARGB controller in the back, which is make it so easier because once you case swap with like OEM motherboards like this, they usually lack fan headers. So, which is very convenient that this case come with the ARGB fan controller and then also the fans are daisy chains on the back. Now, on top of the case, you have a USB-C, two USB-A, audio, a reset button to change the fan colors and the power button. Make sure to change the thermal paste and don't forget to install the IO shield first. If you are using the M.2 SSD, now is the best time to install it. Now guys, it is not recommend to change the CPU cooler. But for me, yes, because the way the CPU looks, it's driving me insane. But also when I did test it before that, like on the first video, my temperatures were on the seventies. So I don't think it's that great. So if you have the funds to change the CPU cooler, Definitely you do because the i7-67 still run a bit warm with this little CPU cooler. Also guys, this CPU cooler is pretty cheap. It only costs you about $10 because I got it on sale. But the regular prices usually range from like $13 to $17. Bucks. I say last week while I was working on this video, it was about $13. But now I believe it's $15. So it just kept ranging from like $10 to $17. Now guys, you can just go ahead and install the power supply. This next step is solely for the 8900 due to the proprietary power pin connector. If you have the previous XPS versions like the 8100, 83, 85 or the 8700, even the 8910 because all of them come with the regular front panel connector. So this one is only for the 8900. If you have 8900, this is definitely for you. Now guys, grab the sensor plug. Remember the one that we cut earlier in the video because we need those three pins on the far left on the front panel of the motherboard. We need to put it back on that left side again. It has three holes as you guys may see. And then we have to put it like that where you see two pins and then one on the bottom and then there's one that is empty that's blocked out. So you have to insert it the same way. And then also for the power switch, we're gonna skip two pins top and bottom then we're gonna move to the next two to put the power switch for the case power switch so what we have to do is just put it like that the way I'm doing it then you will plug the LED connectors minus and plus after that you can just leave the other bottom to empty just like the street lights lit this time like a fire in a blaze gotta burn it down can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far 